This is the process shot. I'm Michael. I'm stuck in a haunted movie theater, and I've seen Moon of the Wolf, a horror movie made for television from 1972, directed by Daniel Petrie. Set in a Louisiana bayou town, it follows an investigation into the murder of a local woman, the theories shared and spread by neighbors, the paranoia of some of those who knew her, and the shocking truth of the circumstances leading to her death. As the sheriff tries to piece together the details of the girl's life and any potential leads, his search leads him to many different sides of the town, from her rundown home by the river where her father and brother live, to a much wealthier family dynasty whose remaining members have secrets of their own that might lead to the killer though it may be too late when they finally appear. Literally. Because it's nighttime. Under a full moon. It's a werewolf. The killer is a werewolf. They might have well as said it right in the title. Based on how the story opens and how it initially plays out, it almost seems like it would be something far more down to earth. Or at least a more traditional crime thriller perhaps with a few folk horror elements, but otherwise realistic. The actual reveal of the werewolf is built up, but never made explicit until a ways through the story, at which point any pretenses about realism go right out the window. It wouldn't necessarily be a bad thing, but the film still tries to be subtle about it and treat it as a much larger surprise keeping up the human drama over time until the last act or so, when all the more familiar horror elements come into play. It's actually kind of interesting how they try to give the story a bit more depth than is actually necessary, at least for the way that it eventually concludes. The acting all around is similarly giving up a bit more than is really worth it for this story, but I won't complain since it's at least better than everybody sleepwalking through their roles. Even when the characters are written as simplified or caricatured archetypes within the murder investigation, they do give up enough personality and conviction that you do want to follow them around and see what comes next, rather than hope that they get knocked off next by the killer. Moving on, the movie's production values are pretty cheap, evidenced most of all by how most scenes seem to have been shot right on location. It certainly adds to believability, but it's pretty obvious that there wasn't much money behind this film, not to mention that it limits most shots and settings to either various rooms and hallways of existing buildings, or plain wide shots in the adjacent streets or on the bayou. Cinematography is pretty uninspired as a result, since it can't quite experiment with anything other than flat angles or overhead shots, all of which are framed from areas where the shooting location won't be disturbed. The only creative framing can be found in point-of-view shots from the killer, which reminds me that the film is edited to cut away from deaths before they have a chance to actually happen, and I hate that. I can't even say that makeup and special effects are at least a highlight because they're only used sparingly throughout the film. There really isn't much else to say about it besides all of that. If I had to summarize, it would be that there are signs of dramatic potential in the story, especially within the cast itself and their performances, but it ignores all of that in favor of something that's easier for more audiences to digest. Moon of the Wolf, Daniel Petrie, 1972 one star. I wouldn't recommend seeing this movie. 
except maybe if you want to take a look at a random Louisiana town from the 1970s, assuming this movie was actually shot in Louisiana. That's it for this review. If you liked it, leave a like. If you didn't, leave a comment. Subscribe to the channel for more reviews. I mean, for all I know, this was shot in Florida. That's where all the great low-budget features seem to be shot, you know? Like, uh... I'll get back to you on this.